on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. His triumphant return to the show. I think it's been well over a year. Uh, and hell, he's changed jobs since then now. Now with The Athletic, he's our good friend Bob Kravitz. My brother, are you okay? How are you, John? <laughs> I'm fantastic. All right, how I are you? you? I missed you terribly. I missed you terribly as I understood why you had to take well, I the, the hiatus. I understood, but I did miss you. Yeah, well, uh, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. <laughs> all right, so what do you think about all the Bob Kraft stuff floating around out there and has been for the past four-plus hours? What's your thought? Oh, boy. Um, well, look, I, I keep going back and forth in this. I, I think this is going to probably blow over pretty quickly. Right. Um, I do think he's going to get suspended and probably have to pay a fine just the way Jim Irsay did. Um, but, look, you know, I'm sitting here watching CNN and watching the Jesse Smollett stuff and the stuff in Washington and everything else. I'm like, this is not the biggest thing in the world, you know. Uh, look, it's, it's, it's awful. It's stupid. Um, I thought he was surrounded by 27-year-old hotties 24-7. Uh, I didn't think uh, he he, uh, really required the services of these folks, but I guess boys will be boys. It doesn't excuse it, but uh, I don't know. I I just don't have a really good answer. I I just think it's embarrassing for Kraft and the Patriots, and uh, they're going to have to pay pay up in terms of a suspension and uh, no doubt uh, uh, a couple of bucks here and there. Yeah. (laughs) I would agree with you. I said this earlier. Yeah, I had a caller that said, hey, this is going to be a bad deal. And, and really, I mean, the, the trafficking aspect of it is absolutely disturbing. But billionaire owner is going to be able to get out of this, not unscathed completely, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as some people predict it to be. No, I, I just don't think so. And, look, you know, you've got a lot of folks in this league who, uh, you know, uh, been abusive toward women, have uh, all kinds of things. And look, you know, the fact that there was human trafficking, you know, I, I've got to assume that when he walks in there, he doesn't know what the circumstances are. He just wants to go in there to have uh, have his way, <laughs> have a little fun. A little R&T. Um, Will you get a 930 appoint- appointment there for that R&T, I guess? Is that what happens? He's, I don't know. What, the don't guest know book? What that But you know, I just I, again, you know, it, it it it's a shame, and human trafficking is uh, unquestionably an issue in this country that needs to be addressed. But uh, gosh, you know, I I have a hard time coming down too too hard on Robert Kraft. Uh, I think he had a made a real lapse of judgment, and I think it kind of sits there. It's uh, Bob Kravitz. Uh, in case you did not know this, he is now a scribe for The Athletic. His latest story involves a former Indianapolis Colts running back um, in, in Trent Richardson. You had actually went down to Alabama, I think, and, and talked with him. And we'll get into some other Colts stuff, present-day stuff. But how did that story go for you? It went really well. You know, he's he's always been a really friendly, good-hearted guy. I just think that I, I don't know if it's just, entitlement or the refusal to look in the mirror. But when he started telling me about how weight was never an issue in Indianapolis, I'm like, I got two eyes. I could tell, you know. And, um, you know, I got a hold of some Colts people who basically said that's a, a load of nonsense. His weight was such an issue that they literally had to pull the scale away from the wall to make sure that he wasn't sort of holding himself up and lightening his load. I love you know, to do that. That's what I do at the doctor's office all the time. I, I, I call it leaning against the desk. Right. They, they never go for it. <laughs> I, you know, you look like me. You need every pound loss. Yeah, but it's, uh, no, it, it, it's, uh, it was fun to talk to him, but I kind of thought that he wasn't fully owning the mistakes that he made in Indianapolis, to put it that way. Yeah, it's a Bob Kravitz of the Athletic. He's on the Eddie Moore. 
Automotive Group Hotline. All right. Uh, we haven't had a conversation about the Colts in a long time here. Um, I, I've made my points of view. I, I, I think that wide receiver, to me, um, opposite of T.Y., needs to be equal to or greater than, just by virtue, really, uh, of what I witnessed at Arrowhead Stadium back in January in that divisional round game against the Chiefs. I, I think it's necessary, clearly, or at least from what I gather, Chris Ballard does not. What do you think? As far as that second wide receiver is concerned, where should the talent level be? What do they need? Uh, Antonio Brown looks good to me. Um, look, you know, I think that uh, you got to kick the tires on Antonio Brown. Uh, is he a pain in the ass? Yes. Is he a diva? Yes. Uh, are all wide receivers pains in the ass and divas? Yes. Um, he works extremely hard. He's got an unbelievable work ethic. He has produced every year he's been in the league. He's still relatively young. Uh, he's still got some more good years in front of him. The idea of Andrew Buck with Jack Doyle and Eric Ebron and T.Y. Hilton, Antonio, O'Brien, uh, uh, Antonio Brown, that is scary. Man. I, I, would, I would kick the tires, see what the deal is on him, see how much of his problems in Pittsburgh were maybe related to Ben Roethlisberger, um, and you know, see see if it's a fit financially, fit in terms of compensation. I I see no reason why they shouldn't at least take a long hard look. I I would I would agree with that too. I don't happen to think he is as you know badass crazy as what he is portrayed. I think part of this is an act just wanting to get ultimately his way, and that's out of Pittsburgh. That's just part of me. I don't think he's Terrell on. You know, I, I mean, he, he's been a little bit of a whack, whack job lately. But, um, you know, you can't deny the talent. As, as our friend Rick Van Turing once told me, defensive coordinators lose sleep thinking about how they're going to defend Antonio Brown. They don't lose sleep worrying about how they're going to defend culture. And I, I just think the whole culture thing is a little bit overrated. Um, I, I, I think that if you if you do have a good locker room, you can bring a guy like that in, get him to toe the line. You know, boyhood friend of T.Y. Hilton's. I think this would be a great a great place for him. But uh, I'll be curious to go to the combine on Wednesday and listen to the Steelers people as well as the Colts folks to see you know just how they view Antonio. Yeah, Bob Kravitz joins us. I, I look at it this way, too. I, I look at, you know, everybody talks about, including Chris Ballard, about how great that locker room is, and that's fantastic. But why can't that locker room bring in and help transform? I mean, one guy would ruin it all. And, and again, do I think it's going to happen? I mean, I don't really think it's going to happen, but I don't think – I think if you have a great locker room like this or has been described, that you don't have necessarily one person coming in there and busting it up, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, look at – I'm not – believe me, I'm not comparing the, the modern-day Colts with, with Patriots, but if you do have a good, solid locker room, you can bring in Randy Moss. You could bring in a Josh Gordon, who obviously didn't work out, but, uh, you know, really through no fault of the Patriots. Um, I, and, you know, this whole thing about doing it the right way, it's such BS to me, you know, going out and growing your own and all that stuff. People forget that Bill Pullian in his early years in Indianapolis was very aggressive in free agency. And to me, you use every tool at your disposal. You, and, you know, doing it. Uh, in-house and doing it, uh, you know, bringing in a couple of creations. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. So I like to see them do a little bit of both, whether that's Antonio Brown or very for Antonio Brown or, or uh, a Landon Collins, somebody of that ilk. Uh, I, I think that's something they got to look long and hard at. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. And Landon Collins is another one, too, that we're also thinking about. Bob Kravitz joins us on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. And I would tend to agree with that, too. I think that, that really they put themselves in such a great position. I mean, when, you, when it comes to draft picks, when it comes to, to money they have to spend, when it comes to just drafting right, when it comes to having that, that solid locker room foundation that they have, is, is now the time when you reap the benefits of putting yourself in as as good a position right now as anybody can find themselves. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because you do have that foundation built, and 
You've got the franchise quarterback. And I think now you're going to have a lot of a lot of people, especially on offense, who want to come here. You know, a year ago, you know, you didn't know if Luck was coming back. You didn't know if Reich was, was a decent coach. There were so many questions coming into the season, and I think they solidified <laughs> excuse me, so many things that, um, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a big time free agent, I'm looking at Indianapolis and think, oh yeah, hell yes, yeah. You know, I get to play with Andrew Luck, I get to play in that offense. So I think they're in a much more advantageous position than they were one year ago. Well, you got a guy like Le'Veon Bell who's made it clear in the past that you know he's not even become a free agent. Now he's going to be an unrestricted free agent, but he's made it clear that you know this is a team that that he would like to join. I am not as in favor as Bell as I would be for a head-on straight type of Antonio Brown. How about you? Yeah, I, I'm with you there. You know, look, I think Le'Veon Bell is a, a marvelous player. Uh, I think he would fit uh, this team perfectly in terms of the way he, he's used. Um, you know, the zone blocking team that they use is very similar to what they've used in Pittsburgh over the years. But, gosh, you know, uh, to spend that much on a running back, you know, there, there are not that many running backs I would – uh, you know, make that kind of uh, that. Uh, I, I wouldn't pay that kind of money for for a running back, especially one who's got some tread on the tire, or who's uh, you know put on some. Let's just face it. I agree with that too. Uh, Bob Kravitz of the Athletic. He's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. All right, Pacers get back going later on tonight. Um, after the All Star break, right now third place in the East. Um, as of this time, they have, I mean, just an absolute scary month of March schedule coming up here. Will this team, in your estimation, be able to hang with it? Maybe not third. Uh, I think. I think honestly, they're going to finish fifth, uh, but no lower than fifth. If they can get the fourth and get home court advantage, um, I like their chance against anybody with the home court. But you know, looking at that schedule, uh, I you know they played okay without all the depot. I think this one out there like six and five, something like that. But I think that's who they're going to be the rest of the season. They're going to be a team that competes, but they're not going to be able to beat the elite teams. Now the playoffs are a different different deal. Got to see what kind of matchup they're looking at. But I look at the arms race in the Eastern Conference, look at Boston and, you know, Milwaukee and Philadelphia and everybody else has been doing. I'm thinking it's going to be awfully tough for, for the Pacers to, uh, to stay up with those teams, especially when you look at the schedule on March. You know, and the way that I looked at it, too, was was this. Um, I, I think they can, but, boy, so many things have to go right. I mean, you just have really no margin for error any longer. And we saw that, Bob, right before the All-Star break with Milwaukee. I mean, they have that lead going into the fourth quarter. I thought Nate waited a little bit too long to get everybody back in there. Milwaukee got on a run. You just don't, and that's from coach on down the line. You just no longer have that margin for error. And you could tell against Milwaukee that they are absolutely without their closer, and that is a big deal in games like that. I was just going to say, they don't, have their, they don't have their finisher. And, you know, look, when you get to the playoffs, everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Especially once you get to the 13, the 14, the 15, you know, they know what you're doing. So then it comes down to who can, who can create off the dribble, who can make plays, who can kind of go solo, play a little hero ball, and get get yourself a good shot. And I just don't know if there's anybody on this team right now that is really capable of doing that. I, I guess I keep waiting for Tyreek to do something, but I'm starting to think he's a lost cause. Um, but, you know, he's got, he's got about 15, 20 games to get it right because I think he's going to be a huge, a huge player for them in, in the playoffs. If they're going to do anything – Tyreek Evans, to me, has really got to start playing. Completely agree there. I asked this question, or actually this question, Bob, was lobbed at me before you came on the air, and we kind of went over it yesterday, too. I've heard from a lot of IU folks that have lost faith in Archie Miller in year number two. Have you? Uh, I have not been impressed, let's put it that way. Uh, I still think that with any coach, you give him four years unless he's completely inept. Um, 
you know, unless you're talking about a Daryl Hazel situation where it's just so bad you have to make a move after, what, three? Um, I think you've got to give Archie time to get more of his own players, uh, more time to stack recruiting classes. He's got a really good recruiting class coming in next year with a chance for it to be great if they can get one more guy that they're looking at. So um, I think it's too early to draw, to make a judgment. That said, you know, when I watch those Dayton teams, and I watch pretty closely because my daughter went there, they always played over their heads. They always played really hard and really smart. They did all the things this team does not do. And, you know, the fact is that Archie has not gotten the kind of buy-in not, you know, I, I hate that term, but it's all I, all I add right now. They haven't had the kind of buy-in that you would hope that you would have with this team. I think they're going to go to Iowa tonight and get their asses kicked, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, you look at the rest of their schedule. I mean, how many more legitimate chances where they are right now do you think they actually have at getting wins? I mean... I mean they got a, they got a couple of games where if they can win... You know, those would be, it, it's so funny. The bubble is so soft this year. Right. It, college basketball is begging Indiana, please, for the love of God, just beat somebody. You know, to me, it would be crazy for them to make the NCAA tournament after having a stretch where they've lost 11 out of 12 and yeah. look miserable doing it. Miserable. Um, miserable. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that too, and that—that's why I kind of wish that. And I know it's all about you know, you know who you are and who you play and all the uh, the formulas of it. But I mean, there, there have to be some mid-major teams out there that would be certainly um, more logical for this with a with a season like this with a soft bubble uh, than we normally would see. I just I've been with you. I mean, you lose eleven of twelve. I'm sorry, you don't have. To me, any reason to be playing in the NCAA tournament? That's just me. No, not at all. And I, I'm with you. I, I, I think the uh, you know the teams in the middle, you know the, the the smaller smaller schools, they always seem to get screwed uh, come NCAA tournament time. And I like to see more of those teams make it, especially in a year where so many teams have disappointed and the bubble is so soft. Hey, the thing about Purdue is too. I mean, they it wasn't a Rembrandt by any stretch, but they did win. But I mean, Matt's got some issues going on too because that's three consecutive games where they really haven't played very well. Yeah, they haven't. Uh, but you know, that's a sign of a good team. If you don't yep. play well, you know, uh, Carson goes four for a thousand. <laughs> you know, they get out rebounded. Harms is in foul trouble, and they still come to Assembly Hall and win there for the third time in a row for the first time in history, which is unbelievable. Um, no, I, you know, to me this game against Nebraska is kind of, this is the game that's going to tell us whether they're going to win the Big Ten or not, in my view. You know, if they can win this game, I think it's pretty easy sailing down the stretch. Um, but if they lose this game, I think it opens the door for, for other teams to speak in case you did not know, you can find his work at The Athletic now. Bob Kravitz covering everything around here still, but just with The Athletic. He's on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Hey, by the way, congratulations on the gig. I sent you that text, you. but have not talked to you face-to-face since then. Congratulations on that. And, hey, we're glad to have you back, man. It's always a plus yeah. when you can come on the air. Good to be back. And, uh, yeah, theathletic.com, and there's some great stuff on there. And I'm not even counting my own junk, but... There's some really awesome stuff. It's not very expensive, and I think you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Well done. Have a great weekend, and we'll do it again soon, Bob. Bye, Thank you. All right. Take care. So Bob Kravitz of The Athletic on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline.